Felicitous greetings, fellow fanatics. Salutations, everybody. I'm Alan Fane, and today we're taking a look at Together in Battle, a high fantasy tactical RPG by Sinister Design. Wait a minute, I'm right-handed. Am I allowed to play this game? Regardless, please do bear in mind that this is an early access title. As such, nothing is finalized, and anything seen herein is subject to change. In Together in Battle, you'll take on the role of the manager of a team of gladiators. It's up to you to hire, equip, and train your warriors, as well as direct them in battle. And don't forget to keep them alive, paid, healthy, and happy. At its heart, Together in Battle takes clear inspiration from classics like Fire Emblem and Shining Force, but it has a number of things that it does differently to stand out from the pack. Right from the onset, you'll be given a preview of this with the game's different difficulty settings. On relaxed difficulty, characters never die from their wounds, they're merely knocked unconscious. In brutal mode, they always die when they hit 0 HP. I played on challenging, where the gladiators may or may not survive wounds when they fall unconscious. Regardless of what you choose, your first day will be spent recruiting a team. Most days you'll be given different options on what to do, but you need a team before you can do anything else. You'll be able to hire from a selection of randomly generated characters. Most, but not all, of these will be humans. Each has their own strengths and weaknesses. Do you want a cavalier that can ride quickly around the battlefield and move after attacking? But if you hire them, you also have to feed their mount as well. Do you pick an engineer that can build bridges and barricades, but they won't do much damage when they get into a fight? Spearmen can attack from a short distance, but usually aren't as hardy as swordsmen. Meanwhile, you have the kineticists of numerous classes, which are basically your mages. Depending on which class they train in, they can heal, manipulate fire, ice, or even mind control enemy units. There's a wide variety of different classes in the game, so which are your traditional choices, but others of which are very different and focus on the game's unique manipulation of the battlefield. And as you get deeper into the game, you may come across events which make inhuman fighters more common. Each night, you'll return to camp. Here, the gladiators will interact with one another and do random tasks. Some like to tell stories, others might enjoy baking, and others may prefer to tidy up the camp. They may talk of their childhood to one another or even fall in love. This may all sound irrelevant, but all these things can affect their morale. And units that are happier fight much better than those that are disgruntled. They may even desert you entirely if they're fed up with how things are going. During the day, you have four main places you can visit. You can return to the recruitment center where a new selection of fighters will be eager to join. Alternatively, you can go to the training ground to improve gladiator sets or to the shop to purchase supplies. This includes various arms and armor, and weapons will need to be purchased regularly as they will break with repeated usage. Additionally, you may find other items such as consumables to let you quickly heal mid-battle or even just purchase food to store and distribute back at camp. And the final option is of course the arena itself, where the main meat of the game takes place. In most battles, you may take six gladiators into battle to fight against a random enemy. You can freely change equipment before the fight, but once the fight starts, the characters is limited to what they brought and what they can pick up. Battles take place over a series of turns, with the player generally having the first turn and the AI alternating back and forth with them. On your turn, you may move and act with any and all of your characters. Any characters that do not act will recover a small amount of stamina, while those who neither move nor act will recover a moderate amount. As aforementioned, each class has its own strengths and weaknesses, and the terrain of the battlefield plays a larger role here than it does in many similar games. Most obstacles can be attacked and destroyed, and some abilities are better suited for destroying terrain than defeating enemies. It's also important to note that some abilities can push and pull foes, or even throw them into one another. The height of the terrain can make a big difference here. Push an enemy off a cliff, and they'll take extra damage. If the character falls into water, they have a chance to start drowning. If they're a strong swimmer, there's little to worry about. But if they're hydrophobic, it can be a major issue. And yes, both of those are actual modifiers that characters can have in-game. Shove one character into another, and they'll both take damage. Though shove doesn't do anything harmful on its own so it can also be used to give a slower character a speed boost. The myriad of different ways the game allows you to interact with and manipulate the terrain is absolutely brilliant. It adds a layer of depth to the genre that is absolutely mind-blowing. And while on the subject of combat, there is another departure from conventions that's important to note. Individual characters do not have their own turns, but rather one shared turn. What this means is that, for example, you can move one character to the side, then move another character into the path they were blocking, and then move the first character back to where they were. This becomes especially important as, unlike most games in the genre, warriors cannot move through their allies. 
This does take a little getting used to, but it plays well into the aforementioned manipulations of the battlefield. Presentation-wise, I have more mixed feelings. Neat characters, such as the Keeper of the Arena and the Recruitment Center, look great, as do the backgrounds. The sprite work in battles looks pretty solid. On the other hand, the procedurally generated characters look fairly wonky, if I'm being honest. They're certainly not the worst I've ever seen, but there's only so much you can do with a number of predetermined pieces and parts, and they start to look very much the same after a while. Music and sound effects are both solid, and then you have the story. At the onset, it looks like all you're doing is just the arena management with nothing beyond that, but before long, you'll come across the roots of a deeper plot. I don't want to go into a full story segment right now, as I'm saving that for when the game reaches full release, but I am intrigued by what little I have seen thus far. All in all, Together in Battle is shaping up to be a very impressive title. I haven't even touched the campaign editor. That's just not the sort of thing I'm knowledgeable about. But purportedly, it's supposed to have full mod support to allow you to do anything from simply creating your own maps all the way up to a total conversion of the game, if you're willing to put in the effort. And I must say, I do hope it takes off. As an early access title, it's a little surprised that the game is pretty buggy at this point, but I can also say that in the short time that I've spent with it, the dev has already made several patches and is hard at work to fix more of them, as well as adding more content. As always, customers should be wary of the risk of any early access title, but I've definitely seen a lot of work on it thus far. Combat is an absolute joy to play, and I cannot stress enough just how much I enjoyed using the terrain manipulations. The Engineer quickly became my favorite class, despite not having much use in terms of actually dealing damage. As an early access title, I'll not be giving Together in Battle a full review score at this time. What I can say is that it's been a wonderful surprise to play through thus far, and I can't wait to see the finished product. When version 1.0 does come out, you can rest assured that I'll be revisiting it to give a full review of the game in its finished state, including a proper plot analysis. Together in Battle is currently available for PC via Steam's Early Access program. If you're interested in purchasing or learning more, links are included in the description. But what about you? What do you think of Together in Battle? What Early Access titles are you looking forward to? If you have any questions, remarks, or opposing points of view, leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell. If you really enjoy my work, please consider funding my channel on Patreon. Until next time, Farewell, fellow fanatics. Thank you again for watching. I have plenty more to share with you if you're interested. You can click up here above my head to subscribe to my channel. You can click over here on my monitor to see the most recent video that I've worked on. Or if you prefer, you can click up here to open this mysterious vault and see what video that the YouTube algorithm has picked just for you.